About two years ago, I was approached by Aubrey. She was surprisingly sweet to me. I was at Derry's, and she walked in and sat next to me at the bar. Hey, hey, you're that girl who paints right? Yeah, why? Why do you do it? It's the only way I know how to express myself. Hmm, could you teach me? Sure. After that day, Aubrey brought me into her inner circle. I was invited to all the parties and such. Anywhere Aubrey went, I was with her. But why? Well, one night she invited me to stay the night at her place. That night Aubrey revealed a disturbing secret to me. I have to tell you something. Do you know how I can sometimes be harsh and judgmental? Yes, you've let me know about that in painting sessions. My father. Lance Carter is abusive. She showed me her scars. She revealed that he would often beat her and even one night she was nearly strangled to death in bed and woke up in the forest. Tonight we gather as one. My friends, I present my daughter to you. Her blood is pure and rich. With her blood, we can become youthful again. Aubrey told me that her father was chained to something. All her life she suspected that her father was a slave to something greater. That night I learned that he was involved in a cult. Not any ordinary cult. A cult that he is constrained to. They call it Diaboli Luna or Devil's Moon. There are six members including him. Three of which are clowns. They are the reason Carter Carnival will exist this fall. Carter Carnival? I snuck into his office and found his journal. In it, I read that this Project Carter Carnival will be at the forefront of a cult ritual in which they hope to kill 25 children and 25 adults. Why? In his journal, there was a description of an entity that I saw that night. The name of this entity is Jasper. Jasper is what they refer to as the one to save us all. Jasper to me was a dark and empty figure. Like a shadow. But I found a sketch of Jasper. He looks like a goblin that has existed since the Dark Ages. How is he here now? It is here now because it is immortal. I read in this journal that a prophecy foretold that an unlikely group of young adults would be dragged to the altar and be put up for sacrifice. Some would die, but one would survive and have the powers to slay this demon. My father has become suspicious of everyone, including you. So stay aware. You need to be moved to a new home or something. He might kill you. It's fine. I can handle myself. I think he killed her. So you just told us all of that and now we're here at this carnival? Pretty much. Well, what do you want to do? Ride the ferris wheel and hope we don't plummet down into the pits of hell? We all walked around looking for answers. Why is this carnival here and who is going to be a part of the 50 who were sacrificed? We stopped in front of what seemed to be a fun house. It was called Funtime Funzo's House of Fun. To me, it looked like hell and not fun. I'm not going in there! Yes, you are. We all walked into the house. The room felt empty but cozy. There was a fire going on in the fireplace. A voice of awful carnival music blasting through a terrible loudspeaker. <laughs> Welcome one and all to Funtime Funzo's House of Fun. I'm Funzo and I'll be your guide. As you can see, you have to choose your path. Go into the near maze, or go into the party room. Which room do you guys want to go in? What's the party room? Only one way to find out. We turned left to go into the party room, and it was, as Funzo had said, a party. Except, I had never seen a funhouse with something like this. The room was dark and only lit by black light lamps and such. The room popped with neon and looked like some sort of a futuristic rave party. There were hundreds of people dancing. I looked around for Brooke and James, but I couldn't find them. The people dancing had somehow built a brigade in front of me. I tried to run away, but they kept pushing me back. Then I felt a cold hand run down my spine. I turned around and saw a black door. I walked towards it, and the room flashed with heavy strobe lights as the dancers pushed me into the door. The door flung wide open, and the cold hand grabbed my shirt. James? Hey, 
We made it out of that room. There you are. Have you seen Nate? I thought he was trailing behind us. <laughs> Lost a friend? Well, that fun builds fun health. We believe in safety, and the path of safety is moving through the fun house and not turning back. Please sit inside the wooden cat. We need to go back. How? Just walk back. Fun those there's no going back. Fun those and I have to punish you. What the hell did he just say? Latin. Did you get any of it? At that moment, the lights came on. There were crimson and the door opened. And a chainsaw sounded. Get in the cart! They ran into the cart and went over the rails. They passed through a few dioramas. Most were your typical haunted house rooms, but they were speeding down the track. The track came to an end as they derailed and flew into a door. They crashed into some sort of a shed. Why would a shed be a carnival attraction? They climbed out, and I saw a dim light. It sat on a wooden desk. James walked over and saw blueprints for some portal that would release another dimension into ours. The blueprints were titled Porta Inferi. James grabbed the blueprints and stashed them away. We need to get out of here now. Where are we going to run to? I need to get to Mr. Garrison's house. The English teacher? What would he have that we need? He knows Latin better than me or you. What about Nate? <laughs> Nate is gone. A massive clown walked up to the shadows. Nate is not a secret place. In fact, you'll get to see him. Run! As they bolted out of the room, Funzo chased them. They followed the track, trying to find an emergency exit, and came across one and bolted out of it. The carnival looked normal, except they heard sirens from the police car going off. They ran over to investigate and saw an ambulance there with me in the back of it. My eye looked bruised, my arm had a burn mark. It looked like a branding mark, but worst of all, I was unconscious. Is he going to be okay? He'll be okay, we just need to take him to the ER. Where are his parents? We came together. We don't know where they are. Can we trail along? Of course, honey. On the way to the emergency room, a call came through from Sheriff Jackson. Alrighty, folks, well, we got a fountain at the carnival full of blood, and five unidentified children are floating in it. Uh, there, there, there is a couple skewered at the top, and it's just spewing bl bl blood out. We, we need your help. We need your help. Don't worry about that. We will send out another vehicle to get that. Strange things are happening in this town, though. Ever since this carnival appeared, I fear things won't get better. They sat beside me as I was asleep. They waited and waited and waited for me. As the night went on, hoping that I would wake up.